Hi, folks. Welcome to the webinar. We'll give people a few more minutes to join. Well, a more minute, and then we'll get started. And by the way, this will be recorded. Uh, so what you say can and, use, can and will be used. No. Uh, and uh, I'm Sam Bogosh, CEO of Axel AI. I've got Patrice Gutebel uh, and Katie Scott, uh, my co-founders on the line. So we are here to answer any and all questions, uh, as has become our kind of weekly habit here. Uh, and, uh, you know, look forward to what you, with what you guys can come up with. Uh, today's actually a really exciting day for us. So we're happy to kind of share some, some cool news and uh, also talk about what is likely to happen over the next few weeks in general, to the extent that anybody knows what's going to happen in the next few weeks, of course. Um, all right, well, with that, uh, I think we should get started. So um, why don't I talk a little bit about today's announcement? Because that's probably the biggest, uh, the biggest immediate item here. Uh, so what I have up on the screen is actually um, the blog from Dropbox Inc. And uh, what is very cool is that they are featuring Axel AI as one of six media partners. So this is a new thing for them. They have never had a kind of uh, focused launch slash partner announcement in the media and entertainment space before today. And um, we are in there with a pretty uh, good group of, of collaborators, if you will. So um, there's a company called Kino that does kind of camera acquisition and tagging software. Uh, we're in there with Ascribe, which is our transcription tool, which Patrice and the team have done an amazing job of integrating with Dropbox over the last month. Um, and it's, it's really actually a, a, a very powerful new implementation of Ascribe from the ground up. Uh, previously, Ascribe was just a plugin for Adobe Premiere. So we had kind of piggybacked on our relationship with Adobe to get that product to market starting in November and December of last year. Um, to date, we have like over a thousand signups and over 300 paying customers for that. But when, when Dropbox came to us and said they wanted to work together on this announcement, we realized that this could be a much bigger deal. Um, Cause obviously Dropbox's footprint is, is global and uh, cuts across many industries. So, um, so basically here's the, here's the write up. Uh, with that raw footage organized in Dropbox, transcription can make the edit easier. That's where a new integration with Axel AI's Ascribe.ai comes in. Ascribe.ai takes advantage of sophisticated artificial intelligence to quickly transcribe footage stored in Dropbox as standard SRT files that can be easily imported into Adobe Premiere Pro. You can also make edits to the transcript inside Ascribe AI before exporting. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. We've actually never uh, put out a joint uh, announcement like this with a company as large as Dropbox before. Uh, and we are really pumped about the possibilities, especially, by the way, to expand the functionality over time. Because our thinking with the scribe has always been that this is kind of the entry level that gets people uh, somewhat familiar with what we can do. But then they start using it more and asking questions and so forth. They realize that, hey, I not only can capture these transcripts, but I can then start to search them and collect them in, in one place. And maybe I could use some other kinds of searching. And so we can upsell them into a broader range of products and services over time. So uh, anyway, with that, I think I will hand it over to Patrice and then I'll be available through the rest of the call to answer questions. Well, thank you, Sam. Uh, just going to share my screen briefly, but just to reiterate again, uh, what is a scribe versus Axel? Uh, Axel is the full bone server. It's our flagship product. It is really meant to go in and uh, allow company that produces video to tag uh, using AI or manual tagging, and then they will find their, their clips and reuse them. So you do not waste money to reshoot and you do not waste money spent in hunting down for the footage you need. 
Now, not everybody will actually need to have a solution like that. that, don't, nobody, that not everybody needs to have a server with AI capabilities, but there is a lot of videos that uh, people who still do video. And this is where Ascribe will come in. So basically, Ascribe is a app, a freemium. So you get it for free. And uh, this is it. So it, it runs on both Mac or PC. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we had the announcement with Dropbox, so I can easily just sign into my Dropbox account. And we are going to tie it into uh, Ascribe like that. That's what will actually help me tremendously. Here, here we go. Uh, Apologies, screen sharing will make it slower. Hello, and now I will be logged into my Dropbox, which means that I will have access to the video files that I want to transcribe. Uh, or I can just play the file and see the transcript if it has already been done. So in this case, you can hit the transcript button. Let's take another video. Uh, okay. So I have here a keynote. Oh, Patrice, text. Patrice, yeah. actually, this is, you know, we forgot about this. Zoom does not pick up on the video when you're, when you're running a scribe. Oh, I see. You're seeing the video, but I remember we, we saw that in one of the uh, beta Correct. demos we were doing. So you may need to, what can you do here? Maybe either try a different video. See, that's one. There you can see it. But for some videos, maybe the ones that are streamed from Dropbox. Yeah. Zoom doesn't pick up on it and show it uh, to the- uh, Correct, audience. understood. Yeah, so we have this, this video and you do have here the transcript they've actually shown. And you do see that we keep the time code intact. Time code is very important because it allows people to uh, track down between audio and video tracks if they are separated or know exactly where we are and when we actually want to insert the captions. So how are we going to do that? Let me just grab a video and let's not take something relatively big. Let's take something small, uh, such as to hear this demo happening. So one minute and a half, and this person is actually going to show an iPhone app going around and he's talking in a microphone. So we're simply drag and dropping the video. Choose the language. We support six languages, English, Spanish, Korean, Russian, French, Italian, and Portuguese. You can, of course, choose the default language to reuse anytime. So in this case, we'll, be, we'll set it to English. Uh, transcribing, and now we are actually extracting the audio. The once the audio is extracted, we are sending it. It's a short video, it's going relatively fast. As you can see, it is almost done. And here we have the transcript. So it took uh, roughly 10 seconds uh, to get a 90 second clip uh, with the transcript. Now I'm going to give you a live demonstration. And you can actually bring also the captioning it over the video. Now you may, you may actually have some mistake. Uh, it will see, for example, where the R convention is actually talking about the RNC convention. I can just go in and edit and, of, and make it actually better. I can, of course, just go in and cap. There we go. Uh, now you can play at different playback speed. So I can play at half, I have to speed. This will allow me to actually edit without ever pausing the video. That is very useful for a lot of people who do transcript. And whenever I am done, uh, whenever I'm done, I can then create an export and that can be SRT, which is the uh, full blown uh, captioning file that is, can be used in many video players or uh, editing in, video, in Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, ITT, which is the iTunes capturing track that is for Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, or you can create a TXT file where you can actually export time code or uh, with time code or no time code. So you can have just the whole, the whole text. And I'm saving my demo.txt and I have my whole text. So let's imagine for a second that I want to process Let's say I'm not going to show you Dropbox, unfortunately, because we do not see the video on the streaming aspects. Apologies for that. But let's say that I have, I have a lot of meetings happening right now, especially that we are all stuck at home. Uh, and just going through and I say, okay, I have this, uh, 
these Zoom meetings here, but I'm just going to take this webinar, for example. That's about uh, 53 minutes long. And I bring over my Zoom recording, choose the language again and transcribe. And now we are extracting the audio. And when the extraction is done, we are going to start to, to um, uh, do the transcription. And again, all of that, it's going, so that's a one hour long uh, meeting. And when it's going to be, it will probably take uh, two minutes to be over or three. And that basically gives you a tool to transcribe and get minutes off any of your meetings. And it's actually so good that my wife don't want to use it. She's like, I don't want to people to know what is being said. <laughs> but anyway, so here we go. The extraction is done of the audio with it and you can see the transcript. So when we send the server up to the Axor speech server, so the Axor speech is where we provide the service for transcription. When we send it, as it is being uploaded, we are actually already transcribing it. So this is actually the upload that you see, uh, the upload of the audio file, which, which will go much faster. And this is how, because it is being analyzed as it is, as it is uploaded, that is how you have a lightning fast results. Now, Patrice, is there a speed difference between local material that's getting transcribed in this way and Dropbox material that's getting there transcribed? There is a huge speed difference. It's actually uh, much faster from Dropbox than you will oh. have from local because it is actually already in the cloud. So, uh, and what, as you saw, we could not play the videos because we are streaming the video using the video preview that Dropbox is creating. Uh, or, or whatever streaming cap capabilities that Dropbox is giving, we are using the same streaming to send it to the uh, to the, to the actual speech uh, server, and therefore you will have all of that done. Got it. So, what would you say overall? Maybe uh, fifty uh, faster, or what's the what's the approximate? I did not. I wish I had done some benchmarking. Ooh, there was Oops. something happening. Validate here. What you got. Anyway, uh, need to figure it out. Uh, I so, think something you know is going to transcribe. <laughs> I did this one already. So another video. Let's do this interview. British sent over. Um, so I, I would say like the, the, the real difference would be uh, and you're actually cutting the upload and the I would say three times faster. Really? Uh, okay. I think I was I was about to do in a couple of minutes, like one or two minutes, a ninety, uh, a, a three hour, a three hour, a three hour long video to transcribe. To transcribe. Cool. Yeah. And here we go. This other video is done. So that's it was described again available on both Mac and PC as a freemium. And, uh, and it for those is that actually are familiar with the, the term freemium, it basically means you can get started for free. There's one hour in this case, one hour of transcription included with that. And then um, and then we charge either for a subscription or for just add on blocks of content. Yeah. Um, and it's just a individual preference whether people want to sign up for the ongoing subscription uh, with rollover minutes or just a block. All right. Well, let's see if there are questions. We are happy to answer. Thanks, Patrice. That was excellent. Sure if there thing. are questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, and obviously, it's a big day for us. We're going to see how this announcement kind of uh, percolates out in the world. We're also, these are brand new versions of both Mac and Windows apps. So there's been a huge amount of development behind the scenes. Most of our products to date have been browser-based, but in the case of Ascribe, we really wanted to make it um, you know, kind of right on your laptop kind of feel and have that interactivity that is very hard to do in a web app. Uh, that being said, we probably will have a web app version of it reasonably soon. Uh, because we, underneath some of the code for the PC version is, uh, is one of the latest web frameworks. So uh, we could actually very easily develop uh, a native web version, uh, an iOS version, an Android version from, uh, from that start. On the Mac, it's a native Mac app, which actually takes a bit more work, but we felt like that was worth the investment 
because Mac users tend to be the most finicky about the responsiveness uh, and feel. And obviously in the creative space, there's a very heavy preponderance of Mac users. So whatever the ratio of Mac to PC users is in the broader uh, computer community, it's a much higher ratio in, in creative, probably on the order of like two or three to one Mac, even though out in the bigger world, it's, it's reversed the other way um, considerably. So, so we, we, we thought it was important to make that investment in the native Mac version, but then for a bunch of the other versions, uh, we'll be using um, essentially a portable code base. All right, let's see if there are any other questions. Um, actually, I see, just checking on Republic, it looks like today's been a good day in terms of new investments coming in, which is much appreciated. Uh, we're already like close to, I think, 70% of the way, we are at 70% of, uh, of our goal uh, in fundraising, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, it doesn't stop there. So actually, once we're at that, we can then go for another uh, chunk and, and another chunk after that. Um, I'm just trying to think if there are other developments. Just broadly speaking, you know, it's, uh, it's an unusual, highly unusual business environment right now. We are getting orders in, we are uh, getting renewals from existing customers, but uh, I think it's safe to say industry-wide, we're all seeing like a bit of a, of a um, dip that is, in our case, coming back up from that dip number. And uh, so we're very excited about May and June and July. I think we'll, we'll see a lot of orders then. Um, but I think everybody has to be fairly cautious about the business environment because there's been this talk about like reopening the economy in June and blah, blah. And it's like, those will be partial measures, obviously. So I think we and any startup have to be very careful with our spending during this period uh, to make sure that it matches up with uh, the, the likely um, recessionary kind of environment we're in. Let's see, any other questions? If not, we can, can call it uh, 10 or 12 minutes early, but um, I think that'll do it for now. Katie, Patrice, has anybody come in with any uh, um, chat or any other comments? Not that I can see. All right, well, in that case, thanks very much for your time. Thank and, you. And uh, look forward to talking, uh, if you'd like, next week. We'll be uh, same time, same channel. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.